Hi folks, welcome to Greg's Workshop. I'm Greg and today we're going to do trailer bearings. Probably one of the most important maintenance items on any small trailer, boat trailer, utility trailer, whatever, is the bearings. These things can get dry, they can get worn out, they get overheated, and when that happens they often break and this goes flying along with the tire. So I'll show you how to put them together uh, properly from the start. This is a brand new axle and a brand new hub and I have brand new bearings. Um, so we'll take it just from clean, in case maybe you want to replace your axle or... Uh... So what do we have here? This is a trailer axle, this is the stub, this is where the bearings ride. This is the hub. This hub already has the races installed. And the races are tapered, you can see. The bearing is tapered, and the bearing, once it's greased, will sit in there just like that and spin around. Two bearings, one on the front, one on the back. A grease seal goes around here that rides on this surface to keep all the grease in. Additionally, this particular axle has an easy lube, so there's a, a grease fitting right here, a zerk, and the tube, or a, a hole rather cut, that goes through here and out here so that you can pull a cap off, hook a grease gun up to that, grease it, the grease will come in the back and it'll push it out the front, so that way you can make sure you have fresh grease. So we'll start by packing the bearings. So there's a few different ways to pack bearings. You can buy a machine where you clamp this bearing in and force grease in and it gets all the grease in here. What you're trying to do is get all the grease in here and in amongst these roller bearings and out both sides. I hand pack. I learned this from a, a guy that was a Marine Corps uh, CH-47 helicopter mechanic. They had to hand pack all the bearings. So uh, I'll show you the method that he taught me. Les, if you're watching, thank you for that. So a little bit of grease in the palm of your hand. You take the bearing with the wide edge down and you just take little bites and you work it in until it starts coming out the top. So you can see right here it started coming out the top between those two roller bearings Then you just pull that extra grease out of the middle because there's always extra grease in the middle. Move, move over just a little bit, keep going. So I have my bearings packed. I'll show you how to assemble it, but first I want to talk about what we would be doing if this wasn't a brand new setup. If this was a used setup, our bearings wear out, the thing got overheated, you wanted to replace the bearings and the races. Very important when you're replacing to replace both the bearings and the races at the same time. This is not a tapered axle, this is straight, so the bearings are the same on either side. On larger trailers they will be tapered, so they'll have a larger bearing in the back and a smaller bearing in the front. Like I said, the races come pre-installed. Uh, if I was going to take these races out, if they were old races, I would take a screwdriver or a punch, and you can kind of see in here, there's just a, the tiniest little lip right here, right up here. So you get that in there, and you pound on it, and you move around, and you pound on it until the whole thing comes out. To reinstall a new one, you need a bearing race and seal driver set. You can see this is tapered, just like the race. You would put it in square. You'd hammer it home, make sure it's driven down nice and flush and snug, and uh, then install the bearing. So the first bearing we want to install is the rear bearing. Reason being is that we need to put in the oil seal. So bearing's in there, it's in the race nicely. Next, we need to do our oil seal. So the oil seal, little rubber ring here, rides on this surface right here, keeps the grease and the oil, if you're using oil bathtubs, uh, from going out. So we want just a just a slight coating of grease on there. Get that started off properly with good lubrication. We're going to set it in nice and square. Then we're going to take this bearing race and seal driver. We're going to turn it around so the flat part is out. Then we'll take a hammer and we'll drive it in. So again, you want to make sure this is nice and square, not driving it at an angle. So right here I can feel this part's going down a little deeper than this one, so I need to tilt this just a little bit to get it squared up. And you want it flush all the way around. You don't want it too deep, you don't want it too shallow, you want it just exactly flush. And once it's in, you have to destroy it to take it out. So take it slow, Take it easy. Make sure you do it right the first time. That'll 
work. So because this is an easy lube axle, we want to fill this whole channel in here out to this hole with grease before we assemble it. Otherwise, we're just going to be pushing air through and that's kind of counterproductive. So we'll just pump some grease through until it comes out right there. Very good. And we'll take our hub. Remember, we have the, ba the bearing and the seal in the back. Put the seal in the front, or excuse me, put the bearing in the front, just like that. We'll slide the whole thing on. Now, when you get to where you're putting the seal in, it's going to be a little bit tight. You just need to kind of work it on just like that. That bearing might pop out. That's fine. Push it back in. Then take a washer, put that on. Next, we take our castle nut. It's called a castle nut because it looks like a castle. I'm going to spin that on. And there's no actual torque setting for this. So you want to make sure that this rotates freely. Make sure there's no play front and back. You don't want it so tight that it, that it stops turning, but you don't want it so loose that it, that it uh, rattles around. So once you get it roughly where you think it should be, there's a hole in here. And in that hole, we'll put this cotter pin. If this was not an easy lube axle, there'd be a hole straight through. Because it's easy lube, the hole is kind of at an angle here. Uh, through the there we go. This cotter pin doesn't really take any load. It just keeps that castle nut from spinning off. So with road vibration and whatnot, that should work. Now, if we were using a regular axle, again, that wasn't an easy lube, we might put just a regular metal cover on it, or we might put uh, a bearing buddy on it, which is a, a metal tube with a, a floating plate in here with a spring. So you, you grease it up, hit the, the grease uh, on the zirk in there, pump it up, and it comes out, and then that spring pressure will force grease in. But because it's an easy lube, we have this cover. So metal cover, the rubber cap that goes in the center. To install this dust cover, it's going to be kind of similar to that oil seal. You want it in there straight. You don't want it crooked. You can try hammering it with a hammer. If you have a large enough hammer, you can do it right there. I'm going to use a wooden block to spread that hammer force out. And go until the tone changes. A little bit more to go right there. Perfect. And lastly, because this is an easy lube axle, we're going to fill this whole thing up with grease. Got my fancy lock and loop here, and I'm just going to pump this. And we're going to push grease in from the back to the front, get all that air out, get the whole thing full of grease. It's going to use probably half a tube. That's okay. Grease is cheap compared to a tow bill. It'd be helpful right now if I had an electric grease gun, which I don't. It's probably kind of hard to see on the camera. Let's see if I can get a better angle, but there's grease starting to come out around the castle nut. That's pretty good. It's starting to fill up all the way around here. This still turns nice and freely. I think we'll call that good. Last thing to do is install a rubber stopper so none of that grease comes out. And there we have it. Free turning, freshly greased, brand new hub. Now, what am I doing this for? What's this gonna go on? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned. Folks, if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified of new videos every other week, roughly. Leave a comment or question down below, and I'll see you next time on Greg's Workshop.